Hey everybody, I am Sarahie Louise Anderson. I am a pole dance educator, a pole performer, and a pole dance studio owner. And this morning, we're gonna go live with uh, one of the gurus of pole dance, um, Marlo Fiskin herself. So I'm super excited to kind of have a, a, a quick little morning chat with her. Hi, hi everybody. So, um, as you guys know, Marlo has been a part of the pole community for many, many years. And um, she's got a lot of wisdom. Um, uh, let me know, you guys, in the comments if you've actually taken classes from Marlo because I know that she has done a lot of teaching all over the world and she's got her online offerings and stuff like that. So, yeah, let me know if you have actually taken class from Marlo. Uh, you can find her stuff at flowmovement.net, I believe, but she will confirm that with me as well. Oh, there's a quick question coming in <laughs> really quick. Let me see if I can answer it for you. One of my friends keeps recommending X pole, but Lupid pole is much more affordable. How's the quality likes and dislikes? Well, um, you know, I would, I will say that, um, Lupid pole and X pole are both, um, kind of the big players in the home pole, um, uh, kind of sphere. Um, I know that, uh, you know, loop it pull. One of the things that I really like about them is that they, um, we know where their materials are coming from. Um, I know that some of the other poles on the market, um, uh, uh, their chrome is maybe not as clean of a metal. So I have always, uh, preferred loop it pull. So Hopefully that answers your question, and I'm just waiting for Marlo to request to come on and hang out, and then we will get into chatting about pole dancing this morning. <laughs> but I hope that answers your question, Wandering Mermaid. Um, yes, the quality likes and dislikes. Um, well, you know, uh, Lupit does have a chrome pole, but their chrome pole... It does not have any nickel in it, so there's no allergies to be worried about. Um, and I'm constantly seeing um, them improve their product. So um, I prefer Lupapole, and I have Lupapoles at my studio. Okay, Marlo's coming on. Here we go. Welcome, welcome, Marlo. Can you hear me? There she is. How's it going? Fantastic. I would love to answer this question about the <laughs> material, actually. Yes, uh, let's get into it. I'm like, um, the, the, what is it? The, the nickel-free chrome is amazing. Yeah. I have the 42 millimeter uh, nickel-free chrome, and I would, I don't want to use anything else. And I was like, <laughs> diehard stainless. <laughs> diehard stainless. So, oh, I yeah. think, it, for me, it like, it's, it's like, all the good things about chrome like it has that like tackiness it holds moisture a little bit better which is for my body tends to be better um but then it doesn't have all the downfalls of uh, all the scary things about thinking about oh shoot what is in this chrome pole so yes i'm i'm one of the people who gets like rashy to the point of like my skin breaking from contact with both brass and with um chrome plating particularly if it's like kind of corroded or older so when i've been to some studios that if their poles have been loved on a lot like i'm torn up <laughs> by the end of the day so hi brian uh, brass yeah. too huh How yeah brass it's it's nasty. So um, all of that to, to say that the, it, what do they call it? Is it the, the hypoallergenic chrome? What's the name of it? I think that's I, what it's be called because I mean, I think that's like one of the main issues, you know, that's always on the table. And yeah, I'm always like, lupid pole chrome is safe. Lupid pole chrome is safe. So yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's Hi, fun. Sergio. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good I'm so happy you. to have you like, to get to see you. I haven't seen you since way before the pandemic as well. Years. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Years. Ah, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's been years. But, um, yeah, I know that you're just coming off of, uh, teaching one of your flow movement, um, intensive this last week. And how was that? Well, I'm actually still in it. Like it's a, the eight week teacher training. So oh my it's gosh. kind of, it's kind of a full-time job, like in the best way possible, but to running an, an eight week online program, that's like technically a six month <laughs> online program. It's, a uh, it's actually a lot more, um, time than teaching in person I've learned. And my, that just may be because it's new, 
but it generally is like there's a lot more behind the scenes stuff that has to go on in order to run an online program and then uh, of organize the materials in a way that's um it kind of like helps people get in there <laughs> you know in person is different just when we're in the same space a lot of things are taken care of that we need to put more work into online yeah yeah i mean speaking of that um is this the first time you're running that yes. eight, like online mm -hmm. wow. yeah so that can <laughs> that's a huge pivot so speaking on that uh what what have been your major pivots during the pandemic <laughs> we know that in the there has been so many. Yeah, <laughs> everything, <laughs> absolutely everything. Um, prior to the present day, I, I was traveling like nine months a year for nine years and everything was taught uh, in person. And now like, you know, full, full pivot, um, which has meant more screen time than ever in my life, you know, <laughs> regrettably. Yeah. And, and getting to work with people all over the world that normally we might not have been able to, to meet and work together. So like there's, there's, the, there's the beauty and there's the, the downside that feels like the downside is on my eyeballs and my <laughs> having to be on the screen, you know? Yeah. Um, but yes, a, a f absolutely full pivot to online teaching. I've only taught in person like this much in the past. Yeah. Yeah, months. that's crazy. I've gone from full time touring to yeah. all online and just the sm the tiniest amount in person. Like, yeah, I mean, whew, what a what a business pivot. I think so many so many people this year can relate. <laughs> yeah, I I suddenly had to learn um, many things that before yes. just didn't, weren't important. Yeah, so there there's it's been a, a huge a huge year of learning how to. Um, perhaps fill more roles than I should be filling, but I kind of think that it, when you're when you're getting started in something, it's good to know how to do all the things that 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 can make it happen. Like, <laughs> here's how to let people know you're running an online program. Before, I didn't really have to think about that <laughs> so much. Yeah. So, so you just kind of you post yeah. and you show up, and if right. people say what you're doing, they come. <laughs> I'm coming to Texas. <laughs> We're right. done. You know. Yeah, it's different. So. Yeah, but like I, I know, like for me, at the beginning of the pandemic, like I just like took this full huge dive into learning all this new software. I was like, blah, I gotta learn these things in order to survive like this. So, um, yeah, there's been a lot of uh, courses and trainings of like, I'm like, how am I turning into a techie now? Like, okay, I guess that's what what this is now. <laughs> so, it's yeah, exactly, filling more roles. But you know, as you said. Once you've actually experienced those roles, the hope is that at some point you experience them yourself, you know how they work, and then you can outsource them. Yeah. Someday. Someday. <laughs> Someday. Yes. Working to that, right? Yes. So if you're watching this and you feel like right now you are like <laughs> juggling all the things like, me too, maybe a Sergio too. <sighs> Let's yeah. all just do this for a moment and it feels better. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, like I threw yeah. up like a bunch of balls right at the pandemic and I was like, let's see what stays in the air. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and you know, um, something that's so valuable about getting to chat with you and having like having everyone be able to, to, you know, be in on this chat is, you know, you've been in the pole industry a long time. You've been a pole educator for a really, really long time. Um, how, I mean, not even... I mean, obviously pandemic is going to come into a part of this conversation, but how have you seen kind of the pole community change and ebb and flow over the years? Like what has been your perspective on this? Someone who's been in it for so long, like when, when did you start teaching pole? Yeah. Um, 15 years ago, I started teaching and in some ways, like the, the, there was a biggest change. I feel like the biggest change that I really felt was actually quite a while ago at this point. And I don't know the year yet, but I'll figure that out. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I went to the first time there was ever a competition in this in the U.S. outside of a strip club. Right. So there have been competitions in strip clubs for for many years. But the first time that there was a competition held in another venue and people came from all over the world to watch it. You know, because it was like a big deal that there was a competition. So people who had an interest in pole were coming from Europe and Asia like to watch this thing. And then within like three years after that, 
competitions were everywhere. And so people stopped going to any one thing. And that goes for even like events, for competitions. Um, you know, there was a point when people would really congregate from all over the world to, to like come together over their excitement for this thing. And then that, that really shifted as there was like proliferation of events everywhere. Um, so that felt like a, a significant shift, seeing places that like would, would venues that would sell out quickly to competitions where there's, you know, more than half the house is empty. And that's just because it's a sign that there's, there's a lot more options going on. So right. good to have more options. For um, but right, there's always that nostalgia for like the, oh, the old days. You the know, good old days. <laughs> everybody would be there. Um, so yeah, that was one. Wait, for history's sake, if you can remember off the top of your head, do you remember, maybe you don't remember the year, what was the event and what, who did you see there? Some of the faces, some of the names, just for history. Yeah. It was the, the first USPDF. I'm thinking it must have been like 2009, I think, eight or nine. And Alethea Austin was on stage. Sarah Croydle, who is like the innovator of the Twisted Grip Handspring. If you're watching this and you've like ever wondered about that, Sarah Croydle. I saw, I saw her do it on stage along with everybody else and with what was that? <laughs> what was that? And that, you know, and then for everybody, suddenly it became a thing that we had to learn how to do. You know, I, I imagine it might still be like this for some people, but I do feel like this, the skill, you know, the skill container of pole is like way bigger now, right? So the, the, the cool new crazy things we see people do is also a lot harder to reach for most people. Right, because it's like you would be like levels of extreme flexibility or like extreme strength, skill, and power. Back then, it was like okay, lifting up into a handspring was, fun. <laughs> you know. So suddenly, that changes everybody's lives because everybody's like, I need to be able to do this thing. Um, you, so you had a lot more. I guess people were kind of aiming for the same uh, skills back then. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Sarah was on stage, did that, Alethea. Who else was there? Janine Butterfly, of course. That was my first time seeing her perform live. And, and that um, completely changed my understanding of like, you know, clarity of execution. Because Janine would be like, just like flawlessly holding her things and like stretching all the way. And I was like, oh, okay, that, that's what it's like to to finish <laughs> your idea. <laughs> All right. Yeah, your idea so. and the mastery of the movement. Yeah. I remember seeing Janine's early stuff and that just blew my mind. Yeah. Um, just the purpose, the purpose behind the movement. She did the, I think she was doing like the jade drop and some various skills that even now, even now people would jaw drop at that, you know, back in, 2009. I don't know how many years ago that is now. Somebody tell me, <laughs> what is that? Oh my gosh. I don't even want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I remember when I first saw you um, dance live, I was a baby polar um, over at Beast Bun in Los Angeles. And you came to do one of the, um, the Beast Bun shows. And I remember you performing and I was just like, whoa oh my gosh <laughs> like yeah I was in that show as like a baby puller in my first ever ever performance and I got to witness you know so many of you guys that you know were from the generation that you know that you know 2009 generation you know yeah that was really special it was super special yeah that, it's fun reflecting on those old performances i would like I'm, I'm like i'm gonna mix all these songs together you know it doesn't like not for any reason other than i liked three different songs and i just wanted to like put them together and dance to all of them like plenty of things i would <laughs> like strongly advise <laughs> doing now to anybody who's like i'd like to do a show okay let's not do what what i did but at the time it was like whatever it's entertaining <laughs> here's my arrangement of ideas you know <laughs> But um, yeah, that was fun. And uh, yeah, my the first time I ever ended up competing was in 2010. And so that, that Beast Bun show came soon after that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember the other people that were in that show. Oh, Janine was there, Zariah was there. So um, Esty, uh, you and Steven. 
I actually think that you and Steven were doing a duet. Oh, then that was the second time I did the Beast Bun show. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Yes. Oh, I know. Those were fun. I'm back on those old days. <laughs> I don't think I've been on a pole that tall since. <laughs> they were, I don't know how tall they were, but to me, they must have been 24 feet tall. Oh, <laughs> they were yeah. Incredibly. I'd never, me, I'd, I'd, I'd never actually. 18, 18-ish. Is that it? I, I'd never felt like a fear of height on a pole before when I was there. And like, as I went to the top and started doing stuff, like a shoulder mount near the top, I like the genuine like <laughs> churning of, <laughs> of <laughs> shit. I felt that there and I had not before. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's that those that was an epic space. That was for sure an epic space. So with all of your traveling all over the world, you know, you toured for nine years. Um, was was there any like, what did you feel? Was there any thing that is stood out to you different about how pole was being done in the world or kind of where we are with that? Or I don't know, what are your thoughts on just yeah. in your in all of your travels, you know? Um, you know, one observation stands out, and it's also a question I get asked frequently when people are kind of wanting to know what are what is pole culture like in different parts of the world, and I think that uh, you know we we can look at the like the culture of any place, like how outgoing are people, what's their sense of space, how open are they to to like free movement, or are they like <laughs> they really want like you know the structure, and those. Um, like, you know, cultural generalizations of, let's say, the way people are in um, Poland is different than the way people are in Brazil. But the studio itself has a, a lot to do with how people show up, their energy in a space, their willingness. And, it, and I think, like, in some ways, the, that, that's, that comes through much stronger. Because you can be in the same exact city and go to two different studios where one, you know, people are like kind of distant and, and like unwilling to play, <laughs> you know, un, like an un, unwillingness to play. And then another studio and, and people are like down for whatever and are more open and warm. So I think that that's, you know, people are drawn to the space that, that matches how they, how they feel most at home and that doesn't always align with like the culture of a place I, I don't know like in New York City if we're thinking about coffee shops you have some that are like libraries that you shouldn't even have conversations with somebody else and some that are like nightclubs right if they're all coffee shops they're all in New York City where people are generally a little bit more like this but you can have extremely different experiences around people gathering for the same thing so it's um it's the same in poll and um, I think something that I really cherish when I go into a, a room is when the people in the room have, have like learned or been conditioned, I mean that in the best way, to keep working on things, like their work ethic. Sometimes you go places and there's a real like, I tried it once, what's next kind of like way where people will do it and then they like stand around and, and like you know look and wait to be told what to do next and then other places they understand that like no you like you keep exploring it there's always more there you know you don't, you don't try it like one time two times because we can't get to the next progression after like one attempt that it doesn't really work like that so um you know that doesn't come down to i think a, a country or a city that's that's more about like how the learning environments are structured so so would you say that's kind of like you know like studio culture like yeah. what the the culture that the studio is providing the space yeah. the, the kind of teachers that are providing the kind of teaching that's being done definitely yeah yeah definitely yeah um it's you know the owner or whoever people are coming into contact with the most but it's um and it can be hard to change. You know, I'll even go with like late, lateness or timeliness, <laughs> right? Knowing that that's a very, um, like the, the, the culture of a place has, will mean that people uh, affiliate with time differently. <laughs> like time in Denmark is different <laughs> than time in Panama, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's just like, that's how it is. It's a cultural conception or relationship to time. But again, w within studios, people will have very different relationships to, to time as well. Um, in terms of like, 
like sometimes people will say, you know, I have problems where people are always late for my class, but it's once that that's become the, the pattern, it's very hard to change it. Whereas some people like that their studios are kind of set up a, around a framework that encourages people to like be early, get in the room, even if it's in a place that that's not the norm. So um, yeah, there's, we actually like are really, sh really shaping behavior when we're in front of a room teaching. And that's a responsibility that like, I don't take lightly. And I, I encourage people to really like consider that you're, we are like, we are literally transforming people through yeah. the like coming into a space and moving together. So we want to consider deeply consider like what it is that we're encouraging people to do and to relate to one another, to relate to the space and the things that happen outside of the space. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so true. And, you know, we have the opportunity to, you know, you know, in, when in, even introducing people to poll and how experience is going to go, there's so many times that, you know, you have conversations with people and they're like, Oh, I tried poll. It's not for me. And you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> hold yeah. on a minute um yeah. you know what I mean so it's like yeah. those first experiences and you know I, I think it really yeah has to do with the culture the space the teachers um you know it's 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 as different as any college professor that you have you know some you're like okay whatever and some change your life you know <laughs> so yeah yeah it can really open up like a whole new you know world for you and um yeah it's a I, I, I agree with you that it should not be taken lightly, for sure. Yeah, I saw Sean Michael uh, waving at both of us, saying hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi, friend. And <laughs> Rasheen. Um, you know, I'll, when you say that beginners say, like, oh, it hurts, I, I always feel a little sad when I hear that that's, like, was people's experience with pull is pain. Because there's actually, there's so much we could do that yeah. doesn't involve putting your sensitive parts of your body on the pole. Yeah. Like, uh, that's there's so much we can do but that's not the way that everybody is like you know model of progression like if a first thing that we understand that people need to do is like sit on the pole then right there's probably going to be pain experience and you are going to lose people of course if you want to do aerial stuff you're going to need to learn probably how to put some skin on the pole unless you're crazy strong and can just wear pants the whole time like dr ken um <laughs> you know but uh yeah that's there's there's a whole world that doesn't involve putting your crotch skin on the pole <laughs> yeah. you know i know so. if if you go to your first pole class and they're asking you to go up or upside down then that's a red flag please go somewhere else <laughs> like there's so many other things yeah. that you, you you know you could be working on that are important to to be exposed to you know so yeah i i totally agree with that so where, like, so with, you know, with the pandemic and everything, I know that you've turned so many things to online, but where do you see um, all of your offerings um, going next? And like, you know, what are you working on at the moment? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm as I mentioned with my, uh, this was the, the physical <laughs> representation of what I'm doing. It's like, <laughs> you know, testing things. I'm currently testing running a floor flow teacher training online and um, I have to observe, like, how do I feel doing this? Does this feel like I'm going to do this again? How is this landing for other people? And, you know, I, there's, a, there's a lot more. I'm in the, a testing phase of many things. But I, am, I have had many people ask, and I'm leaning heavily to doing more teacher education online, whether that comes in the form of, like, a specific training or actually more of, like, an ongoing program that uh, uh, helps, like, pull teachers, even just pull enthusiasts, like, dabble into more education that would enrich their ability to teach classes in a way that's like informed about the ways the body works <laughs> or even um, styles of cueing and, and helping people have access to more ways of expressing the same thing so that they can connect with more students. Um, so some, something along that, I keep leaning that way, you know? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Great spaces like the spaces we were chatting about where people's first experience and experiences in pull and the culture in the studio are all a positive experience yeah teaching teachers that's a valiant <laughs> very important thing for yeah. the longevity of our, of our yeah I, I i definitely like my one of my you know when you take a 
personality assessment, one of the things that comes through for me very strong is like learner and collector. And that is really like, I'm, I am always like get, gathering resources and even kind of having the opportunity to, to help direct people's attention to people who are already doing the work. Like I don't need to be the one saying all the things, but I certainly am like, <laughs> kind of have this like web of <laughs> connections to, all right let's take a look into the world of fascia and how could that, how does knowing about fascia improve your ability to both express fluidity or move efficiently and find continuous movement because they're very related, you know? So kind of like doing, doing this, <laughs> that's, whatever this is, that's something that I enjoy. <laughs> this Better than this. <laughs> this one, yes. <laughs> Almost as good as this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that, I know that, mm -hmm. and somebody earlier had asked, like, am I coming to New York? I mean, that's been like up for debate. I, I, I'd love to go back to New York. I always love teaching there. In the current state of things, I like, I want to wait a little longer so that I can just do the thing. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't really know. There's a, I have a list of things with question marks for next year knowing that there will be online <laughs> wait right i'm with you claudia right i'm waiting i am yeah i think uh <laughs> wait and see how this all pans out <laughs> yeah yeah but in the meantime like learning learning online i'm i am constantly learning how to how how to make it work for more people and one thing is definitely standing out is people want to come live so all of you listening right now live thank you for being here right and it's so much easier to watch this right now than it is to watch later so i'm um, trying to figure out how how i can <laughs> teach for every time zone in existence <laughs> yes thank you those of you one step at a time it is hard to make plans and that's all right. I kind of have embraced not having plans as someone who would have like two years in advance. I'm telling you what I'm going to do every month. No longer. Yeah. But it's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it definitely forced uh, forced us into a new reality and shaken up our world into looking at things maybe a little bit differently. Yeah. yeah I, you know, in the same way, it's like, yes, uh, did we lose a lot in the pandemic? Yes. And are we able to start reaching people in a different way? And yes, you know, maybe, maybe I've found that there's a lot of people that I haven't, w wouldn't have been able to reach before that, you know, are kind of coming into play now. So, and everyone's, you know, having a chance to really figure out what's important to them. You know, it's interesting. I've seen a lot of people make these full circles with pole and a lot of people, you know, beat themselves up about like taking the breaks from pole and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, no, it's like, this is, yeah, it's always, it's always there. This is, this was always meant to be a joy. It was always mm -hmm. meant to be a release, a joy, um, a place of connection. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, especially when all the competitions that when all the competitions fell away, I know that I had some students and some and um, that were everyone's kind of freaking out. Like, I don't have a place to now go and get my serotonin yayas to <laughs> tell me that I'm doing a great job. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, uh, well, this might be an opportunity then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, in, I mean, it's, it's interesting. And in, you know, in a way, like something that I, I look at with admiration and don't relate to is needing a competition or needing a stage performance in order to motivate me to train, because it actually puts me in a, like more of a negative relationship to training <laughs> than than a positive one, which I prefer to, to keep because I think that for me, long movement longevity is like top, top priority. I, I readily say no to doing things with my body that my ego wants to do because I'm like, all right, <laughs> we know, what is this really going to be doing? Probably, probably more damage than, than good. So, um, yeah, I, I, a lot of people right there, like their personal practice has fallen away and, um, figuring out how we can find joy and whatever it is that we're choosing to do movement wise is paramount yeah for sure when, i think once we have to once we have something that we love and is meaningful to us we're willing to put in the work that's a little bit more of the grunt work to sustain the practice you know like but if you don't have something that fires you up and you're passionate about like you're not gonna do whatever the foundation work is for it 
as likely or you'll try it for a week and you know fall off your program yeah i know that's how i like that's how i get really excited is when my students um are at like an intermediate level and they'll start showing up in my beginner classes and i'll be like hey <laughs> How do I know that you're becoming an advanced pole dancer? Because you're here in this beginner class right now. <laughs> yeah, for real. I, I think that's my favorite this. place is like, I call them like kind of like deep perspectives on <laughs> beginner or like on foundations, like seeing just how rich that territory is. Definitely. I know. I, I remember like for both of us, that's like, love that zone. Yeah. Like the nerdiness of fresh beginner brain moving into any type of movement to just mm -hmm. I mean it's like it's like trying on clothes you know <laughs> it's it's so fun you know yeah. you're just out there kind of going "Ooh, how does that fit that's interesting I'm mm. not sure if that's for me but whoa maybe I could <laughs> you know it's yeah movement yeah. is is a it's a beautiful way learning movement is a beautiful way to just kind of paint paint your experience over time um, you know, what did I, what did I hear the other day that just like totally nerded me out? It said something like, oh God, I really am going to butcher this. I know it. <laughs> um, you don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. And it's like being a part of this human experience, um, you know, is, is such a, uh, uh, is such a gift. Like we are given a body. <laughs> like, like, so while we're here on earth, it, you know, how fun is it to see what the experience is of having this body and what it can tell us and what it can do and, and what journey, you know, what adventures it can take us on. So, yeah, I think I heard that yesterday. I'm going to quote it wrong. I think someone maybe said it was a C.S. Lewis, but I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to nail that down because I don't want to misquote it, but. You can add that to the show notes. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. Add that yeah. to the show notes later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I know that you are having to run. You've got a lot of things going on right now, but let, let it, everyone know um, where we can find you so we can see all the amazing like new offerings that are going on for you and all probably the here on Instagram. <laughs> I think, yeah, that, that's probably the place that I'm most up to date with. Um, there's a link to sign up for my email list which one of the things I've learned this last year is how to write in more captivating ways. <laughs> so if you want to be on my newsletter, hopefully you'll find it enriching and entertaining. <laughs> I don't send out many, so don't worry about that. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Instagram is the, is the place. And then right there in the, that room with my, my looped pole. <laughs> that's where, um, yeah. It was down. That's the hub. <laughs> the, it's the most frequented space in the in the house. Yeah. Well, I, well, I hope I get to see you in real life, Sergio, sooner rather than later. I was just gonna say that it's really nice to see you here, and I miss seeing you in person and just being around your amazing energy and learning from you and you know jamming with you and all the things. I think I think we have a kindred nerd spirit. <laughs> Remember that in the old, the, at, we would go and you would film all your social media videos and you would change your shorts again and again. And I was like, wow, she changes her outfit for each video. That, that, that's content. so professional. That content. <laughs> now you know oh. what it's all about. Cause now, yeah, you, you're now, right. Now you're right. pandemic happened. You're like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> I got to give me some outfit changes, batch some content. Make I mean, I, I I haven't I like I learned that watching you, but I still will dance in my pajamas and and not ever change. But but I understand the 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 purpose. It's visually appealing. I, oh, I had an endorsement for me being for, yeah. being a mom now. You're just gonna get what you get, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is real. Glory days, but now it's like yeah. you know. Now it's like I have one outfit. That's it. <laughs> I, I have heard from the people that they, they say like that they do appreciate that I just do what I do in whatever situation I'm in rather than needing to make it a production. And I do think like, I appreciate both. Like I love watching people when it looks like it's, it's put together and 
it then can feel a little bit less attainable. Like, oh crap, if I want to dance, I need to think about what I'm wearing. Like, no, <laughs> I need to out push, there. A, push play on a song and like, let's get to it. And yeah, right, and both are both are beautiful, but we want to like reduce the obstacles to getting started for sure. I think that's wisdom because, you know, I also think that like, you know, you and I are around just kind of like maybe a same age generation. I think it's a lot you know, these younger kids on the social media stuff, they like really grew up with this stuff and they know how to do it. You know, you and I are learning it in our adult life. And, um, you know, I think one of the things that's definitely like keeps me back from putting myself out there a lot is, yeah, like needing the perfection, the, the perfectionism of whatever it is. Yeah. Like, oh, this the quality of the video has to be good. The music quality has to be good. The outfit has to be good. That's like, no, 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 no. Like, just put yourself out there. Like, just put yourself out there, just do what you love and do what you do. And I, I hope that helps pe some people listening today. It's just like, put your joy out there, put your love out there. Don't, you know, you know, do, uh, of course, put out there what you feel is comfortable. Do it for you though, you know, so, but don't let, but don't let stuff like, yeah, you know, don't like let stuff like uh, that perfectionism hold you back from putting you out into mm. the world, you know? Yes. Great insight, Claudia. Give value for real. That's, the best responses um that is another thing i actually have learned like that just being like very g generous not holding back anything that that in terms of sharing or helping um you know it it comes it comes back in the best in the best possible way and and i stay inspired when i'm sharing the most freely i'd honestly be like making uh, tutorial videos like every day for for instagram if I wasn't also doing this with all the other things, like, <laughs> you know, there's, there is literally no time right now for that, but like, I would love to, I enjoy it so much. So maybe next year, maybe next year for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All Thank right. you, Sergia. Thank you. Mama. So good to see you, my dear. Thank and I um, hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. Have a great Thanks. one.